Okay, no, no, I'm sorry. These are part. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> I sounded like a nigga who was like playing hide and go seek, who jumped out and finally caught somebody. Ha ha ha! Like it's. Oh man, I'll never do that shit again. <laughs> sounded so bad. But yo, what is BHD Army? It's your boy Blast from Says D. I hope you guys enjoy. Fuck, I went into my outro. I'll be fucking up. Today we're here to watch more 10 really creepy true stories. It is of course by Mr. Nightmare. If you guys want to watch the original video, as we tend to chop parts out, the link is in the description down below. It leads to Mr. Nightmare's channel and this video on his channel. Make sure to go check him out, subscribe to him, watch his other fucking stuff. He has a lot of fucking scary stories on here. He's one of the biggest and one of the, the best dudes doing the creepypasta uh, genre, or just creepy stories in general. And make sure to go check him out. Lego! Let's keep on with, you know, scaring the shit out of ourselves. Really, really, really don't fuck with that sound effect. Like, every time I think it's not that bad, because I've heard it before, I realize how loud it is when he does it. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's scary, bro. I was just four or five years old, and my parents had just separated. My mom was living in a two-bedroom apartment. I had my own room, but I preferred to sleep in her bed whenever I was staying with her. In the three or four seconds it took me to wake her up and ask me what was wrong, we both looked back up at the door frame, and there was a man standing by my open door, making his way out of the bedroom. I still don't know how she managed to do it so quickly, but my mother proceeded to pick me up and literally throw me out of the screen window. She quickly followed and we were able to start screaming for help and someone called 911. The police came but didn't see any signs of forced entry, only that our front door was unlocked, which led them to believe that the man must have exited that way. The strange thing was that my mom swore up and down that she had locked the door that night with the deadbolt and chain lock. About a week later, she was cleaning the kitchen and opened up our water heater closet and found a notebook with names and drawings, as well as a pair of gloves and some gum wrappers. The police were called again, but all they could do was speculate that the man had been in our house and hid until we were asleep. Damn, nigga, that shit take dedication like a motherfucker, man. How the fuck did he get in in the first place? So you mean some of this nigga hid in the water heating closet and just drew? Was this nigga like a poet slash murderer out this bitch? Like, oh no, I do open mic at night, but in the daytime, I, I kill innocent women and children. Like, really, nigga? Is that what's good in the streets right now? You know, because just having a regular job just don't cut it nowadays, man. You know what I mean? Like, because being a poet or just like a, you know, like a rapper or whatever, that shit don't pay money. You got to have a second job. And hopefully that second job is not killing people or robbing their houses in their sleep. God damn. Yo, but I, I fucked with that mom, though, man. Picked up the baby and threw him clean out the window and then got out herself. That's what's up. Damn. I got to get a gun. That's real. I got a fake gun, like a prop gun. You know what I mean? Like for my skits and shit, but I need I need a real gun. I need to shoot bitches. <laughs> you breaking my shit, nigga. You getting a whole clip handed to you. And by that, I'm shooting every piece of metal out of it directly into your anus. Same spot if I can aim good enough. And that's real. Nigga, that shit is every time. One day while doing my laundry, one of the lights blew out in my basement. Nope. My basement is set up so that the laundry room is split up from the other side of the basement with a wall and a door. No! Nope. In order to get upstairs, you have to exit the laundry room and go through the other part of the basement. I don't fuck with basements for the same reason. I just don't do it. Just something about it seems ominous. I, I'm not about that life. I finished the laundry I had to do while dreading the walk through the dark basement. Not gonna do it. I exit the laundry room, get halfway through the basement, and I hear a loud cackle. Imagine a sound people make when they imitate a witch. Take that and imagine the witch had been smoking for 50 years, making her voice deeper and hoarser. No! <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. Did not see that coming. 
I'm gonna turn on my lights, man. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn on my like. I just, I just, I just don't do scary, ominous shit, man. I swear to God, yo. I turned on on the light, all the lights in my room, and it's daytime out. I don't fuck with this type of shit, yo. That's what I heard, clear as day, right behind mm -hmm. me. I didn't hesitate to bolt for the stairs. I waited until my father got home and then changed the bulb. I have yet to hear that cackle since, and I have not told a single person in the house about it. First of all. Mr. Nightmare, that's fucked up. I feel like that was on purpose, because for me, that was probably one of the, the scariest jump scares I've had happen in a long time. Just did not see it coming at all. I just really didn't. I don't give a shit how old I am. I'm never going to the basement again. Fuck that. I'm scared shit this to my parents. I'd have told my parents to, the, to their faces. No, fuck you. There's something in there. I'm not doing it. You do your damn laundry your fucking self. Yes, beat me. Just beat me. I'll just take the beatings. I'm not doing it. There's some shit I don't do. I just, I just don't do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this. This happened to a friend of mine. Minji is in her late 20s and works as an English tutor in South Korea. One evening, a few years ago, she was tutoring a high school boy. They were up studying pretty late and the buses stopped running. Nope. Being a long way from his house, the boy asked if he could crash on her floor overnight and get the first bus in the morning. Minji was very reluctant. Dude, yo, hey, what's really fucked up is, I feel a little bit reluctant to admit this. I've done this shit to try to get some vagina from a chick that was teaching me some shit. It was like 11.30 at night, all the buses stopped running. I'm like, yo, can I just, you know, let me just sleep on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> I hella didn't get any ass. She went into her room and closed the door. Pretty sure she slept fully clothed too. She wasn't even really attractive to tell you the truth. It had just been a while. I gotta start lying to people in my videos, man. Telling stories about me trying to smash unattractive females and shit. Why do I keep telling people the truth? This is the internet, man. Y'all niggas would hella believe the legend. I'm gonna be telling the legend right now. Yeah, man, all the bitches look like fucking Jason Derulo's current girlfriend. All of them fleek titties and fat asses. That's all I've ever smashed. I would be lying. <laughs> oh, we're gonna edit that out, man. I'm snitching on myself. Eventually, she relented. It's not. They went back into her one-room apartment and she got into the bed while he laid a blanket out on the floor. We trying and to they fuck. both fell asleep. We trying to fuck. A few hours later, at maybe 2 a.m., the boy wakes Minji up. I'm really hungry, he says. Let's go get some food. Minji opens her eyes and looks up at him in disbelief. Food? Now? It's 2 a.m., go back to bed. But the student insists. No, I'm so hungry. Let's eat something now. She tells him that there's some ramen in the kitchen and he could fix himself some. This doesn't satisfy him. He doesn't want ramen. There's a 24-hour place just down the road. Look. I think I know what happened. Someone in the closet or something and he's- Bitch, no! Okay? I said come get food with me! Bitch! Okay? Now! Bring your ass! Or you'll never bring your ass anywhere ever again! Come get food. You should be able to pick it up by then. Someone's obviously throwing you a bone. That's like if you go into public school, you friends with like all the weird people, and one of the weird dudes send you a text message, hey, don't come to school today. And you're like, well, why? Don't come to school today. You don't ask questions. 100% good looking out. Boop, that game over. No ask questions. You just do it. That is a good looking out. That's what you send back. Yo, hey, good looking out. And then you probably call the police because he's more than likely planning some fucked up shit. But you still got the hookup. You feel me? This bitch is fucking up. Eventually, after several minutes of persuasion, the boy gets Minji to come with him to the restaurant. They leave the apartment and head out. As soon as they're on the street, the boy turns to Minji and says, I'm not hungry. I woke up in the middle of the night and looked under your bed. There's a man sleeping there. They call the police and discover that a homeless man had been living in Minji's apartment, sleeping under the bed for two months. The boy only saw him because he was lying on the floor, so he had a clear view under the bed. 
you gotta stop with these goddamn sound effects, man. It's it's ruining my life. It's scaring the shit out of me. Two months? Like, did this nigga be using your shower when you're away or some shit? How do you not smell it? That woman had no perception abilities at all. Like, you can't tell that someone is here. Because you can feel human presence. And you couldn't feel that? She needs to fix her shit. I was driving a shortcut from 29 Palms, California to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Fucking up. 29 Palms is located in the desolate high desert east of LA. Shortcuts are death. The shortcut was all two-lane road through total nothingness. Nope. Except for it passing through Amboy. Nope. Once I reach the top, I'm driving north through a canyon with high grass on both sides of the road. Nope. Up ahead I see some stuff in the middle of the road. As I approach, I slow down to see a red Pontiac Fiero stopped sideways across both lanes. Nope. A suitcase open with clothes scattered everywhere and two bodies laying face down in the road. A man and a woman. I stop a hundred feet or so away, and the hair on the back of my neck is standing up. Nigga, you stop! What are you doing? Do you not love yourself? Come on, man! Not rocket surgery, nigga! These two people are all laying face down. They're not sleeping. Huh? In the middle of the hot road? These niggas ain't sleep. Okay? They're dead. And whatever killed them might be out there. Why would they park their car fucking sideways? Okay? Someone probably did that shit to stop people. And these are the last two stoppers. They're expired now. They are murdered. They've been dugged. And and you're next. You're gonna stop? Nigga, I'd have sped the fuck up. I will ram a car. Okay? No fucks given. I'll pay the insurance costs. Damn that! Being a Marine, I reach under the seat and pull out a 9mm pistol yes. and chamber around. Yes! Something seemed very wrong. Yes! It looked too perfect, as if it were staged. In the ambush? Shoot something shit! Something was just wrong. Shoot shit! As I scanned the road, I saw a line I could drive. Past the guy in the road on mm. his left, swerved to the right Back of the up. woman, behind the Fiero, Back up. and I'd be on the other side. I dropped it into first gear, punched it down and drove the line I planned. As I looked up into the rear view mirror, I saw that the two bodies had gotten up to their knees, and twenty or so people emerged from the tall grass on either side of the road by the car and bodies. At that moment, my right foot smashed the gas pedal to the floor, and did not let up until I had to slow down for the I-40 east on-ramp. I will never know what would have happened to me had I gotten out of the car to check on the bodies or stopped my car closer to them. No, see? Exactly. Helping people is a trap. I would help shit. Damn that. Apparently I need to upgrade the gun that I want to get from a pistol to a full-on AK-47 nigga lay everybody down. You come out the bushes on me? On me? Fuck no. Everybody's getting the taste of this shit. Everybody become Burger King napkins out of this hole. Everybody's getting at least six of them. I'll count them off. Six for you. Six for you. Six for you. I'll DJ Khaled the fuck out of these niggas. Another one. Another one. Another one. Everybody gets a taste. Damn that. Just damn it. It's not gonna be me, children. It's not gonna be me. You got to do better than that shit, yo. Just do better. And that's real. But yo, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Also, if you want to go watch uh, more of these types of videos, they are on Mr. Nightmare's channel. These videos, are, it's way more entertaining than I ever thought it would be. Because in these situations, since they're true, you put yourself in them. And you think of what you would have did. Man, I'm glad the dude pulled his piece. Alright, that's real. Lay everybody down. Damn this. The link is in the description down below to watch the original video. You know, so you don't hear, hear my loud ass talking over it. You know, make sure to go subscribe to him, man. Check out his other videos. It's boy Blasphemous HD. Twisms. Fuck this. Fuck all of this.